Good morning, folks. We've got some outstanding can't-miss items today, including eyes on the sky nearby, around the world, and deep into the cosmos. I've also got two key space weather notes, so let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star once again dominated by the Earth-facing coronal hole. There are no solar flares, and solar wind will remain quiet until this coronal hole stream arrives. It has begun connecting to Earth magnetically, Luckily, we've only seen an uptick in moderate seismicity thus far. The first space weather note today is about the Earth facing quiet. Starting on the north central region, the bright area snapped at the limb but went quiet and the two little spots at his ears came and went in about a day. Meanwhile, those CMEs we saw over the weekend came from this spot here, which will be gone by the end of the frame. It seems like a solar uptick is at hand, but the Earth facing quiet is 4 for 4, and test number 5 is coming over the limb into view now. The second space weather story comes from NASA's Tony Phillips. His Earth to Sky Calculus group has confirmed the increasing radiation environment as we enter sunspot minimum. Remember, it is indeed our contention that we are in the modern zenith of cosmic ray flux and heading higher. Up next, we're at AMS Meteors with their Lyrid animation. In case you didn't know, the Lyrid shower peaks over the next three to four days and should provide some great fireballs if you can escape the city lights. Best time to watch any meteor shower is indeed when we should all be sleeping, but perhaps this will be worth the wakefulness. Middle East and Southwestern Asia weather woes continue as eight died in a storm in eastern India. A few children have been swept away in a flash flood in Pakistan and extreme weather conditions continue to pound the Iran, Saudi, and UAE regions. Up next, we're looking at dust in the nearby neighborhood of the galaxy and across the skies as a whole. Perhaps the most interesting image positions the sun in the center and then the galactic center off to the right. Sort of like this image most of you should remember showing our position in the local dust cloud. It is fascinating to compare the two and see how they match up pretty well across a lot of the space just with far more gaps in the dust than at least I would have expected to see. Up next, so regardless of your cosmology or astrophysics preference, the argument about black holes or whether or not they are the Einstein version, something from a static universe, or something else completely. This study seems to suggest that even these massive named black holes that do not follow standard rules, instead indicating some other physics is at work, will masquerade around the cosmos as Einsteinian black holes and attempt to trick us. That's very nice of them. We're going to close today with a definitive stamp on the destroyed planet concept of the early solar system. Folks, we now have mainstream belief that major planets switched places, planets formed in different positions and migrated over time, Mercury survived an inner system pileup, and that at least one planet, noted here, was destroyed. This is now phenomenally on point with stories of chaos in the skies described by our ancestors all over the world, and yet, alas, mainstream belief remains that these cosmic events were millions and millions of years too early, that our ancestors didn't see them, and just happened to tell all the same stories being told now by accident, and they didn't really witness or know anything. An academically unsatisfying disaster. Anyway, folks, all new systems are running over at the Disaster Prediction app. Observers alerts on today, folks, in case continued low solar wind leads to cosmic ray watches. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support. It's how these videos come out each day. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.